welcome to the vlog it is snowy outside it is so beautiful looks like a straight up winter wonderland outside i think i'm gonna go on a little walk now that i got my filming done i don't have like snow boots snow boots mine are you know in storage in seattle but i do have these and i do need to break them in and these are supposed to be like you can wear these in snow they are waterproof they're just not super high and there's actually a lot of snow right now so i want to break them in so i'm probably just gonna do like I don't know, a short walk, like maybe a mile. This jacket is originally Abercrombie, but it's the one that I thrifted from ThreadUp. And then this hat is, I'm trying to remember, Primark. It is sunny outside, it's so pretty. I've been putting this off, but it has to happen. This stuff is all gonna take hours because some of these are like bigger tasks, but I wanna start off my 2024 reset. We're a little, a little late here, but if this is also you, it's not too late. It's gotta get done and it'll just like set up the year to be in better shape. I feel like I'm forgetting like a main thing that I will add down here. If you're making a physical list, leave extra room in between because you'll like think of things as you add them. First section is just like digital declutter. I need to be better about just clearing out the spam and actually removing myself from junk email lists because I just let them pile up. One big thing that again, I put off, I have a massive pile of, these are mostly receipts that I need to go through and expense. It's, I do it a pretty easy way. I use shoeboxed and I just take a photo on my phone. Then I have to manually go in some of them and like fix it and whatnot, but this won't take too long. I just have been putting them in my backpack and like letting them pile up. And if you're confused, those are business receipts. So they're like write-offs, but I have to go through and actually expense them. Next we have desktop clear out. I can't even show you my desktop right now. It is horrific. <laughs> desktop on my computer. Part of it's because when I'm making thumbnails, I just screenshot stuff and I save it and it goes to the desktop. And so then I have to clear out 5 million images on the desktop. This is more of like a plane activity or while I'm watching TV, I'm just gonna write TV or plane. <laughs> because that can be done at the same time, but I need to clear out my iPhone. I have so many videos that that takes up the most amount of space, so it doesn't super make sense for me to spend like hours deleting photos. If I'm bored on a plane, I do that. But what I also like to do is in Google Keep, I have a list of like mundane tasks where, I mean, I never really get to this point, but if you ever have a moment where you're like, I wanna do something productive, but what do I do right now? Then you can just like reference back your list and do something like this. This, ugh, I dread doing this. I do all my own books for my rental properties and it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare only because honestly, I have to double check everything that the management companies do. If you work with a management company on real estate, double check their sheets because I found literally hundreds, every year I find hundreds of dollars, close to a thousand dollars of errors, quote unquote, <laughs> or them overcharging. And it's better to do it now, like at the end of the year when it's still fresh than trying to do it months later in tax season. So I have to update, I have to check their sheets basically against my bank account to make sure it all adds up and also that I wasn't charged for like ridiculous bullshit kind of fees, which there always are. So I, I dread doing this and this takes me a while. Like I try to do this now like uh, three times a year. I don't do it every month. It I like when I get in the mindset, I can just crank it out faster than, than if I do that every single month. And then again, expensing. Okay, and then my YouTube LLC. I've been good this year about keeping on top of this. Again, my accounting. All I have, I think I only have December left that I have to do. Check the income from my bank and PayPal and I update it on like a Google sheet. And I'm so glad I stayed on top of this this year because sometimes I try to do everything in tax season. I'm just gonna have way less work this year. I just thought another thing I need to do, I have to check my shoebox expenses. For the most part, it does it pretty good, but I have to go through the categories and just double check that everything was categorized. Those aren't all of my expenses. I'll have to go into a bunch of different stuff like emails and some other things to get all the expenses, but I just wanna start off by doing that at least. Right now, I'm gonna start off with expensing receipts so that I can get this big pile of papers out of here. Emails, I guess I could also do while I'm 
like watching something. It is Sunday when I'm doing this, so I'm kind of like, maybe I'll watch a show and expense some receipts and go through my emails. That sounds nice. those random things on my to-do list is I need to find an alteration place and go in and get these altered because they, they're all too long. I have the YPB flare leggings. I love the YPB. I'll leave the exact ones I recommend down below. The flare ones are new to me though. And then a couple pairs of jeans. These ones are express. I guess I should wash. I mean, I don't think they're going to shrink that much more, but I guess I should wash these before I get them altered. For lunch, I'm gonna finish off this Trader Joe's tomato soup. I liked it. I feel like it's very salty. Like I almost think I could dilute it with like another tomato soup. I don't think I would repurchase it, but I love their sauce version of this. The sauce is so good, especially with, actually, did I get that? Here it is. This is amazing with this. You gotta get the spicy chicken sausage. Put that in here with some pasta. It's legit so good. It tastes like a restaurant, but I wanna finish this off, so there's only a little bit. I'm gonna have that and chicken sausage, and I think I have some kale that needs to be eaten. Okay, I'm gonna prep my favorite salmon. I don't have an air fryer here, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try it in the oven. I've never done it in the oven. If you have an air fryer, I've showed this so many times in vlogs now, but it's like one of my go-to meals now. I just cut it up and then put it in a Tupperware and do the marinade directly in here. And I like it best overnight. If you have time, I'm probably gonna make this for dinner though, so it'll probably just be sitting for a few hours. I always feel like I'm missing one ingredient, but I think that's pretty much it. So here we go. Ooh, this is a good night. I just realized what I'm missing. Garlic, if you have fresh garlic, use that. There's garlic powder here, so I'm gonna add that in. just blow dried and flat ironed my hair for the first time since having the layers and I don't hate it as much um, done like this. There are a few questionable areas <laughs> I've noticed now that it's straight, but I can kind of touch that up because I don't have the blowout brush right now. I just used my flat iron to kind of curl the ends under a little bit and finish up my Sunday activities of laundry and walking and cleaning. Okay, so as you saw, I prepped that salmon, which I am going to eat tomorrow. I am in the car going on a food adventure because I got on Arby's talk. Okay, apparently Arby's is actually good. Who knew? Arby's to me has always been that one fast food place where I'm like, who is going to Arby's? It's just, I don't know, I've never known anyone to go there. I've never heard anything good about Arby's up until TikTok. Now I'm having the most intense Arby's craving. And if there's one thing I've learned in life, it's that you gotta strike while the craving's hot. So I'm curious. I have screenshots of the things I wanna try, okay? I'm gonna get the meal, like the combo with curly fries. People say that their curly fries are better than Jack in the Box. We'll see. A Reuben sandwich. I know they have a few popular sandwiches and they have like Hawaiian rolls, onion rolls. There's a lot of different substitutions you can do it sounds like. I'm just gonna get it as is. And then the mozzarella sticks, I'd heard about separately like a couple weeks ago randomly. I think it was from Kim Tai's vlog, she was talking about it. Apparently they have the best mozzarella sticks. So I gotta try those. So if we're going, I feel like I'm 
obligated to also get mozzarella sticks. But it sounds so good right now, and I worked out this morning, that I feel like, not that you, you know, need to do that to get Arby's, but I'm just saying, like I'm starving. So if you download the app, I think you can get coupons and like 25% off. The snow is pretty deep right now, so I'm excited. <laughs> Update, I can't figure out how to get through this drive through with the snow. Oh, this is embarrassing. I've looped around like three times. I can't tell if the driveway is just not plowed or if I am missing it, but I saw one car in there, so it's open. Arby's has been secured, <laughs> barely. I turned on the oven because I'm gonna reheat this stuff because I did cheat and have a bite of mozzarella stick in the car because I wanted to try it while it was like hot, hot. I'm gonna put everything on a pan in the oven to like reheat it right now. But here's, here's the Arby's haul. Okay, we've got mozzarella sticks. So far, so good. It's not gonna have a cheese pull now because it's like cooled off. Mm. We... We brought curly fries. Things can change once the food is hot. Opinions can change because for me, I like my food like scalding hot and I feel like it does make a difference. But so far I feel like these are on par with Jack in the Box. I might like the Jack in the Box ones a little bit better, but we'll see when they're hot, hot. And then I've got the Reuben somewhere in here. I asked them to throw in some of the most popular sauces. So I have Arby sauce and horsey sauce. Don't know what that entails. This is the first time driving where like the roads were fine. I was going super slow. I'm a grandma driving in the snow. The roads that were plowed were fine, but through the neighborhood where the snow plow didn't come through, I was basically ice skating, man. And it's like thick powder, so I didn't think it was gonna be like that. I've driven in snow, but not like this and like on a regular basis. So I am learning, but I watched a YouTube video the other day, don't you worry. I know the do's and don'ts. I know you're not supposed to turn really fast or brake really fast. So I was just kind of letting the car like glide over <laughs> the snow in the neighborhood basically, going super slow. Here's the Reuben. We gotta take a bite, huh? Cheers. Mm. I could see if you were having this sitting down there when the bread is still kind of crispy, it would be amazing, but we're gonna crisp everything up here. The first thing I noticed was there's individuals from <laughs> tomorrow night at the first trust ceremony. I'm the cowboy. I am the cattle hauler. Strong. I'm able to give back to my parents. Hey, yeah, this, is a little... this is a better opportunity. So I'm about to make a vision board. I did this last year for the first time. I just made it as my iPad background, so I wasn't looking at it a whole lot. I think it's an interesting way to document like what is most important to you that year or like what you want to see more of. So I don't know if I, you know, I think like whatever you put your mind to, like wherever you're putting the most input is usually where you're going to see the most output. So that's kind of my train of thought with vision boards, but I think it's fun to make and I just visually think they're cool to look back on. So there's lots of different cool ones on Canva. I kind of like this one because it has the different spots for you to type things and you can customize everything on Canva so you can change the color palette, but it's just kind of nice because it's way faster because then you already have like your borders done. You just swap out the images and you can change the color palettes and stuff. Oh, I like this one with like the rounded. I kind of like that too. Well, of course, that's the paid one, but that's really easy to make. I mean, it's literally just rectangles with the black background. Oh, that one's cute. So I chose this template from Canva. I just wanted something basic that I would like seeing as my phone background. And to start, you're gonna choose your images from Pinterest. I mean, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Just create a vision board board for your on your Pinterest. And then you can go through, think about what you wanna focus on that year. Find images that you want to look at that are pretty and to save the images you just go on those three dots and then click download image it's super easy and I would say when you're doing this part of it save more images than you think you're actually going to use because when you're visually putting it together some of them just don't work as well as others uh, lol that I found <laughs> the picture of these three ladies doing some yoga and I you know I related that's how my body feels <laughs> most days but then I was like you know what this is a vision board okay I'm gonna be be youthful and uh, put a Pilates photo on here. So now I'm just dropping in some of the images. I ended up changing these once I like actually set it as my phone background because some of them just didn't look as good. 
but you can drag and drop, play around with the colors. I try to kind of alternate so that, for example, see how the dark photos are kind of like spread out and then we have some with blues and greens that are kind of like peppered in. You can change the fonts of and the colors of everything on Canva. I just, I like PicMonkey. I use it for all my thumbnails and stuff, so I'm just used to it. So I just dragged it in to put it on a black background, and then that's what I used as my MacBook background. And when I saved the Canva image, that was already sized for an iPhone. So here's my final 2024 vision board. I'm going to go through, talk through what's on here real quick. Over the holidays when I was in North Carolina, I did a ton of baking and I used to bake a lot in high school and make like breads and stuff. And I feel like I just kind of ran out of time to do that, but I really enjoyed it. So I kind of want to bring that back into my life. So that's the cinnamon rolls in the corner. A man by a fire. Yep. Need that. In the right, there's a snow showing photo, which I'm going to pick up this year. Below that is a Pilates photo, just kind of symbolizing like, you know, low impact workouts basically and just like moving my body. And then we have a dinner party photo. I want to host some dinner parties this year. I am going to be moving this year. So hopefully like, you know, making friends, <laughs> having them over for dinner. Pickleball. I want to pick up pickleball. We've got another relationship one. Can you tell that's a, it's high on the vision board. Camping, love camping. Then I have a, an apartment photo. Just want like a really cozy. I'm going to be I just said I'm going to be moving this year. Yep. I want like a really cozy and just earthy tone kind of apartment. And then I have a gym photo and lakes and just mountains and being outdoors. So very different than my vision board last year. If you want to see that, you can check out last year's video. I'll link it down below. But just focused on like, you know, kind of settling down this year, being outside, being active, meeting people. And yeah, that's my vision board. Just a heads up, I would not recommend that salmon recipe in the oven. I mean, it still tastes good and it, you know, it's not terrible, but it's not nearly as good as in the air fryer. Like I do think the air fryer is key. Okay, I'm right in the struggle bus a bit right now. I was up at 4 a.m. with a migraine the last three days, but I made it to my pottery class. The medications kicked in, so I'm covered in, covered in clay right now. It's actually harder than I thought. There's like a lot of strength involved, which, my upper body strength is uh, not quite there. Putting on eyeliner because this is embarrassing. I went online last night to verify this website. I had to do the identity verification where you submit a photo of your license and then you take a photo with your webcam and it's supposed to like automatically verify you. But my identity did not get <laughs> verified. So then I'm like, oh, it's the license photo. Let me do my passport that'll be fine. So I submit my passport photo, same thing. So I need to um, put on some makeup so I actually match my photos and can get freaking verified. And I'm literally gonna just wash my face off slash I should probably just hop in the shower after all that clay. Like I have clay up my nose right now. I wanted to do a little winter boot update. If you follow me on Instagram, I asked you guys for suggestions. So here's the thing. I've been looking for winter boots that I can hike in, like that are pretty lightweight and bendy and easy to hike in. That have like a little bit of, you know, grip on the bottom where you're not like slipping in ice and stuff. So I don't want full blown snow boot. Like I have Sorrels that are tall, but I want something more like a hiking waterproof boot that has like the insulation so you don't get cold and that I can wear snowshoeing because that's something I want to try this year and then I think I'm gonna like because I really like walking and I really like snow <laughs> and I want a snow sport that isn't skiing or snowboarding so I went on a whole deep dive I don't even want to tell you how long probably like five hours one night on winter shoes I was reading reddit threads for snowshoeing and snow hiking i was reading snowshoe magazine so then i went to a local shop i went to rei they were like sold out of everything or didn't have ones that fit me so then i went on instagram to ask you guys if any of you snowshoe or hike or whatever in the snow and what you recommend so i'm gonna go through i there were tons of responses so i'm just mentioning the top ones and i'll link them all down below the top suggestions from you guys and then i'll share which ones i ended up getting as well. The first one, this was mentioned a lot, Merrell's the Thermo Chill Mid Waterproof Snow Boot. They didn't have these in stock in REI, but I think they do have size fives in Merrell. I don't know if REI carries the size five. Just a heads up if you have small feet. You can get them online and you can get them on Amazon too. All these at 
yeah, I think all these besides one you can get on Amazon. The other requirement was I didn't want them, like technically I can use my Columbia hiking boots because they are waterproof. They're not insulated, but I would have to put on gaiters. So that's an option. Like if you're just traveling somewhere and think you'll snowshoe like one time, you could just use your normal waterproof hiking boots and then put gaiters on, which are like the material that blocks out the snow from getting in. I want something that's like a little bit taller and more for actual snow. That's why I didn't go with the Merrell's Oboes. These I tried on in REI. To me, these felt really uncomfortable compared to my Columbia's. The bottom felt like really stiff and then also the rubber toe felt like very stiff. But a lot of people mention these on Instagram. They're waterproof insulated. And I like the height of that one. It seemed like a good height. Next up, we have the Salmon Ultra 4 mid Gore-Tex. Again, these are like lower. These are actually, I think the lowest. They hit like right above the ankle. So just not what I'm going for. Okay, so these are the ones that I ended up going with. There are two versions of Columbia that were mentioned. Am I recording? Yes. That were mentioned most often. I love my Columbia hiking boots. I think they're really nice. They're like lightweight, they're comfortable. My feet never had the breaking in period. Size up, size up, basically a full size because I'm normally a women's four and the Columbia five hiking boots fit me. And then also if you're gonna be wearing winter like wool socks, that'll add some space in there too. I really need to throw out those flowers. So the two most popular mentioned were the Newton Ridge Omni Heat 2. I almost got these ones. They're also right now $58. They're like half off a lot of the sizes on Amazon. The ones that I went with are the Bugaboo. These are the other most popular and these are the ones that were mentioned as like number one on a few different snowshoeing places that I was reading about them. The men's version looks really different than the women's style. I kind of liked the look of the men's better but that's okay. We're not going for fashion here. We're going for practicality and comfort. These I also got on really good sale though on Amazon and these ones are nice and insulated so hopefully my feet don't get cold and they're higher. So I don't think I'll have to wear the gaiters with these. It looks like they have some nice like traction on the bottom. There's a few options if you are not looking for like a snow hiking shoe and just want a good snow boot. These were mentioned a ton. There's a tall version and a short version. These are pricier but a lot of you said that these have lasted you years. They're the UGG Adirondack boot. These are cute too. And you can fold down the fleece or have it really high and, and wear it up. These I think would be a perfect wear around town kind of snow boot. These actually look really good. And then last up, Sorrel's. A lot of you mentioned this as just like a snow boot, the Sorrel tall waterproof boot. I really like my Sorrel's. They look a little different than these. These look a little bit less bulky than the ones I have. Mine are pretty old. Mine are probably like, I don't know, six, seven years old. And then Sorrel also had some other ones that look like running shoes that look really nice and lightweight. But again, I don't think they're really like hiking boots. It's more of like outdoor walks kind of thing. That is my roundup, consolidating all of your top boots, winter boots, if you need any options or you just moved somewhere cold or whatever. But I'm gonna end off this vlog here. I will say ever since I've had my vision board on my phone, I see what's happening here because every time I look at it, I'm like, ooh, I need to sign up for those lessons. I need to do that. So I can see how looking at stuff just makes it more front of mind. So if you are doing a vision board and you want to see if like it can have some kind of impact, I would say actually set it as your phone background. This last year, like I said, I only had it as my iPad, which I don't really look at too often, but I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Everything I talk about is down below. My next vlog that will be coming will be the hair makeover part two. Getting excited, but I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.